tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! What is up, AfterBuzz fans? We are here in the studio with Scott Takeda. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. I'm glad you could make it in the studio. Exactly. So, so you guys know you can find me on Twitter at Danica Kennedy. And are you on Twitter as well? I am at Scott Takeda. So be sure to check him out. Yes. Keep it moving. Check us out online. Exactly. Now, thank you so much for coming in the studio. Well, You've been very me. busy lately, it <laughs> seems like. <laughs> uh, it, it seems like, I think uh, I've flown more than 30,000 miles by the end of the month there'll be more than 40,000 miles this calendar year so you're still living in Colorado right and you're commuting out here to LA New out York to New York uh, all Portland over. New Mexico Atlanta wherever there's TV film I'm commuting there it's great because it used to be mainly just in LA and now you can exactly. kind of branch out and go all over the place but you're from Colorado originally right yeah and, and, and technically I actually still live there but it seems like this calendar year i haven't spent much time there you don't spend much time there i yeah. mean i was talking with you and your publicist last week and you're going to come in for an interview but you got a big role on grim the finale season finale yes. an amazing reason to push back this interview congratulations thanks for rescheduling glad yes. to be here today thanks for coming in yeah and uh, Grimm is an amazing show, of course, and I'm sure you can't spill much about your character or the plot because it's the season finale and they're trying to build that up, but can you tell us anything about what it was like working on it? You know, it was it was actually one of my uh, more favorite uh, TV show experiences that I've been on. Uh, really fan friendly, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> friendly cast. Um, and you know you you see them on TV and it's there's something about the the seeing someone on a picture that you know shines brightly in your your TV room that you you kind of put them up on a pedestal and so when you're sitting down in the makeup trailer and then they come over and they introduce themselves and say hello it's like oh hello you know you're like and oh you're a real human how you're weird a real human yeah well especially with a show like that because they're really good at the effects and I like know. that really like they kind of like that greenish kind of tint and I don't know it seems like another world in a way it so. really does and it was kind of interesting also in 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 between takes being able to kind of just go over and look at where the camera is aiming and they they must do something to those cameras because they really do it really does look like some other universe that they're yeah, shooting. Yeah, it seems like a totally different planet. And I mean, like superheroes and like crazy different things going on, lots I know. of powers. Ugh, I wish I could ask you more. Can you tell us anything about your character or probably not? Uh, probably not. Play I think, it safe. <laughs> I, I, I think that the folks at, uh, in Grimm would appreciate if I just keep, kept saying, um, please watch. Yes. Uh, I think it'll be sometime in mid-May, and uh, it, it's it's a terrific episode. And it's the finale? It is the season finale. That's a big episode to be I know, on, too, I know. so even more exciting. I know. And you're also in The Messengers as well, right? Exactly. I'm in The Messengers, and I think that actually starts uh, end of this month sometime. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we should be looking around for that. Yeah, on that's, on the, that's on the CW network. So, um, And they've been kind of secretive as well, too. you got to um, be hush-hush on the project. Very, very hush-hush. It's... Uh, it uh, it's basically about these um, the all these diverse strangers that are somehow have this um, otherworldly event happen to them and they find that they're all kind of interconnected Interesting. Uh, and they kind of combine together to kind of try to solve a mystery of sorts it seems like you're doing a lot of the kind of like action superhero suspense mystery stuff is that on purpose because you love it or because you keep getting those parts <laughs> i think it's because i get those parts yeah I, do you if, happen to enjoy them too though i do i do um i i i, I don't know if there's a, a real strategy uh to my career right now except for <laughs> i'm just very very happy to be working right now yeah you're working a lot well the thing that really stood out to me was that fun house movie with tina fey exactly and 
I love Tina Fey. She is so awesome. She's such a rock star. What was she like to work with? Uh, incredibly nice. She um, seems like a great just, person. Just really uh, personable. Um, I happened to work in two different uh Phases. I worked uh, a bit with her in one month, and then uh, I, I worked with her in another month. And so I remember coming to set the second time, and I'm just kind of walking through the parking lot. And Tina was also walking through the parking lot, and she she called out my name, name Scott. I went, what? You're like me. Yes. Yeah, you know who I am. You remember me? <laughs> that is so cool. And so she she gave me a nice hug and said hello again. So that was nice. Oh, she seems like the sweetest person in the entertainment industry and super funny, just like really easy to work with. I, I happen to have the really uh, wonderful honor of um, when I wasn't working, they allowed me just to kind of watch the monitors. Um, and so I actually had a chance to watch her work. And um, part of the reason why I did this was because I knew that I was shooting more toward the end of the day and I kind of wanted to see how the directors worked. And so I kind of learned that the first, you know, two or three takes was on script, and then they just let them improvise. So I had the wonderful opportunity of just watching her improvise around the script, and it was just hilarious. I thought that was so kind of the fun stuff to watch. that would just come out of her head. It's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I feel like she's just so quick witted. Like she's so fast. She'd be good at the fun run improvising stuff. Exactly. Did they let you do that as well, where you kind of improvised a bunch exactly. of scenes? Exactly. Exactly. So again, you know, the the first two, three, four takes, you're you're on script, and then the director is just after a while. I I kind of let Tina take the lead, and so when I could kind of hear her kind of going off script, then I would go off script myself too. You know, you're still trying to take move the story forward oh, of course uh, so you just can't start talking about uh, hey let's go out for a drink and drink some Merlot and all that type of stuff like that I mean, yes it, and yes the and rule of exactly, improv. the rule of improv <laughs> I was paying attention in class back in the day <laughs> do you like doing improv or do I, you like more the scripted stuff I kind of wise? enjoy both uh, mm -hmm. you know I've had the wonderful honor of being trained by the folks at UCB Mm -hmm. Upright Citizens Brigade, so nice. I enjoy being able to kind of just riff on the moment. Uh, but also sometimes the scripted stuff, sometimes you kind of see the genius behind how they've kind of scripted certain lines, and it's it's sometimes nice just to be able to stay, stay true to the story as mm -hmm. well. As an actor, do you prefer playing parts that are really opposite of how you are naturally, or like kind of a challenge, or do you like kind of playing specific typecasty parts that you're usually oh, thrown into? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I tend to play roles, or I, I tend to be offered roles that um, are a little bit similar to me, and then there's a little, kind of a little bit of twist at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, well, like with, with with Dallas Buyers Club. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously. Um, Which is so cool, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you. Amazing. Uh, but I'm not actually from Japan. So yeah. I don't uh, actually uh, speak with an accent. Yes. Do you have to do that a lot, though, where you have the Japanese accent and you're playing like the super Japanese guy typecasted? Uh, thank goodness. I, I, uh, my grandfather was born in Japan, so whenever I'm, I'm offered these kinds of roles, I, I just channel him. And I just <laughs> go back and remember how he used to speak. Like, what would Grandpa do in this oh, situation? What would he do? How would he speak? You know, And how would he hold his body? And, and there is kind of a certain type of body type, and it's very, very formal. Um, so those are the types of roles that are kind of maybe similar to me in the fact that I might, you know, be someone who ha had a lot of scientific background, but I'm not necessarily specifically Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, I can halt and catch fire. That was another one that was very, very specific Japanese, uh, formerly from Japan. But um, I mean, I play uh, a boss, you know, and I, I don't often think of myself as a head of a division of something like that. <laughs> it's a powerful Japanese man. I know, I know. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. You're like, hey, check me out, mom, dad, friends. I'm so powerful now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's like, I've made it now. I'm the boss. <laughs> I had to play a doctor in something once, and I was like, mom, I'm a doctor. Are you proud? I know, <laughs> like, I know. It's fun to do that. You know, but, and, and there, there's that saying, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Mm -hmm. And that's actually literally me now. Yeah. <laughs> I played a doctor on Nashville and... You're like, check it out, guys. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm all these different things. <laughs> it's I like know. Big boss man. Yeah. The, my, my college degree is paying off. What did you get your degree in? 
theater? Uh, no. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually started out as a, an electrical engineering major. Interesting. And then I ended up with a degree in uh, broadcast journalism. Yeah, and you did hosting for a while, didn't you? You did a lot of TV presenting. A little bit of uh, TV hosting, yeah, and, and some TV news reporting. And, you know, when especially when you're working in small market television, you're kind of a, that backpack journalist, one-man band type of thing. So you're also carrying the camera. and. Oh. I know how that is. I know, I know. Uh, That's why I have chiropractic bills, you know. Do you feel like it was an easy transition going from hosting to acting because you're used to performing, but instead of playing specifically yourself, you're like a character kind of like yourself? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I I know like um, part of what kind of was different about my career is um, I looked really young when I was a cub reporter. So um, advancing in the television news world was going to be a, a bit of a challenge because I still looked like I was in high school half the time. <laughs> um, that's a good thing, though, to look young. That's a great thing. When you get older, you appreciate that I'm more and more, right? I'm appreciating it now. I'm appreciating <laughs> it now. Um, so I w- kind of went behind the camera, and then I kind of missed being in front of the camera. So that kind of spurred the, the desire to get back in front of the camera. and. One of the most natural outlets, quite honestly, was, um, you know, acting. Mm-hmm. And I, I still remember I was, uh, I was moving to Philadelphia uh, for a TV uh, news job. And there was this, um, uh, listening to the radio, and there was this, uh, you know, open call. The, the, the DJ was saying, hey, we've got a Steven Seagal film coming in here. If you'd like to be one of the extras in this film, uh, you know, come on down to the Ramada Inn. And, uh, <laughs> Started off with extra work. Well, and I, I actually couldn't do that because I was moving off to Philadelphia the next day, but I thought, oh, that sounds like so much fun. So it kind of spurred the whole idea of wanting to to do pursue this career on camera. That's cool. I mean, it seems like you're very interested in all aspects of entertainment. You were mentioning how you were watching, you know, them fill fun house with Tina Fey and stuff and I'm the same way where if I'm on set I want to like be watching what the director's doing and what everyone else on set's doing and I can tell you're kind of that same mental way where you're like how's the camera work how are the shots like you do both behind the scenes and in front of the camera which is very important I think it helps a lot well and, and, and and I think at the very heart of things I'm a visual storyteller so when I'm not in front of the camera, I earn a living behind the camera as a director or, and, and sometimes as a photographer as well, too. So it's always so fun to be on set and be around all these amazing professionals mm-hmm. and see exactly what they're doing and see how they think and, and how they decide what shots need to be shot. And so it's, it's inspiring. And sometimes I find it that much more energizing to, to be around that if I'm not actually in front of the camera than just to be hanging out in the trailer. Oh yeah, it's so much more exciting to be on set, especially with all these shows and movies you've been working on where you have these big names and you're just working amongst them, I'm sure. Well, and even, some of the, even sometimes some of the big names are like the cinematographers, you know? Yeah. They're, 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 they're a big name amongst the cinematography world or, or in the directing world too. And just to kind of see these really great storytellers, mm. you know, just, just work their craft. It's just really a great honor to be around that. Could you ever see yourself directing, like doing a film or anything? Oh, and I have, uh, sure. You do. As I, my voice cracks, yeah, I'm showing yeah. my young, youthful age. Uh, <laughs> I actually have uh, with short films. Oh, great. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I love directing. Um, I think amongst my storytelling um, filmmaking group, we've kind of decided right now that uh, my lovely bride, Lori, is the one that probably has um, a lot of skills as far as being the director. So lately we've said, hey, you direct. You're, you're quite good at this. So we've been very, very fortunate to, to kind of help produce for her. And she, we've got in a couple of weeks we're going to be going uh, to Providence, Rhode Island to the Sene Film Festival. Ooh, I know. that's going to be fun. I know, and her first film it was, it was accepted there. So we'll be going there to, oh, to that's so fun. You know, rub elbows with other uh, filmmakers there. Oh yeah, they. I love going to film festivals. They have a big Orange County Newport Beach film festival oh, this yeah. week, and they have one in LA. But there's so much fun to go to. I'm sure that one's going to be great. And, and we can't wait. We can't wait to watch the other the other work there too, and just kind of learn from that. 
Yeah, I mean, film festivals sometimes have the best films, and you're like, why isn't this a big blockbuster? Like, why didn't anyone pick this up? There's so many little hidden gems at those places. I know, I know. But um, do you feel like when you're <laughs> getting interviewed as an actor, you want to slip into your broadcast journalism and, like, ask questions? Because I feel like that's how I would be. <laughs> I'm, like, so used to asking the questions. Um, boy, I don't, I don't necessarily feel that way. Um, <laughs> I, I, I That's know. such a weird question. I know. <laughs> you know, it is kind of interesting doing the red carpet, yeah, um, and 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 seeing the 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 throng of media out there, and kind of remembering being on the other side. Yeah, um, I, I never kind of covered a red carpet, but I've certainly been in a situation where you have other, like especially like the the, um, the presidential campaigns. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you you set up your camera there, and there's NBC and ABC and all these other you know, networks and, and news outlets. And it's like, okay, you're part of the throng. Yeah. And so it's interesting now to be on the other side of that and see that mass of people and, and to understand kind of what their life has gone through. I mean, it's like they're standing there forever. It's like, it's not probably fun for them. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. you at least as for me, I, I try to make sure I show up for them and, and make their life as easy as possible because it's not easy sometimes sitting amongst a whole bunch of other colleagues there trying to get an interview. Oh, yeah. And we appreciate actors that do that and take the time, especially, you know, we are going to red carpets here at After Buzz pretty regularly. And there's the actors that come up and they really want to talk and, you know, promote whatever is coming up. And then there's the ones that, like, avert eye contact and beeline away and they're like, don't talk to me. And they'll be like, oh, we're on safari. You know, it just depends person to person. But sure. I'm sure it's interesting, you know, being on the other side when you've been on the media side before. It's yeah, interesting yeah. transition, but it's all entertainment. It's all fun. <laughs> it's all entertainment. It's all fun. And what was kind of interesting is like with Gone Girl, um, uh, Congrats again, by the way. I'm sure that was so much fun to work oh on. Oh my God. Talk about being able to just hang around and watch David Fincher work behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. But uh, part of that film was talking about the, the media culture and the television culture and how so much of uh, what we decide is either truth or guilty or, you know, innocent is defined in the media. And so it was very interesting also going through the, the press uh, as, as an actor and being on the other side and seeing the throngs of media there and going, well, this is kind of what the film is about a little bit. Oh, yeah. How the media kind of changes and shapes the message that we all hear. I actually never saw Gone Girl. I'm so sad I haven't seen it yet because I've seen like most of the Oscar winning and, um, you know, sure. running up movies and stuff. And I've heard it's amazing. But... I saw, this is so, like, gossipy, but I saw that Rob Kardashian, like, posted a picture of the girl from Gone Girl, like, covered in blood, and then put, like, this is, like, shout out to my sister Kim, the biggest bitch in the world, or something like that, and I was like, what? Is she, like, a crazy person? Like, I mean, she's crazy in that movie, right? She's, like, a mental, like... <laughs> serial killer kind of um, like she's not your average human being i think that's a nice way of putting it she <laughs> she likes getting her way so yeah. i mean i guess that kind of works <laughs> i guess so yeah i just you know i read all the gossipy stuff so i was like i wonder what that's all about sounds bad well if you ever have the time you should you should watch the oh. film it's a wild roller coaster of a ride it's at the top of my list. I can't wait to check it out. And I'll probably let you know afterwards. Well, I'll be appreciate like, ah. that. Appreciate but that. But with Dallas Buyers Club, Gone Girl, you know, you've worked on so many huge things this year. Do you have any fun set stories you can share with us? Fun set stories. Um, or crazy, memorable. You know, I think for like with Dallas Buyers Club, one of the, the, the memories that I have was kind of bonding with Matthew over travel stories. Nice. Uh, because I had... Um, to get to the set of Dallas Buyers Club, I actually interrupted uh, a, a Southeast Asia vacation. <laughs> so I had been in, I, I flew from y y the US to Vietnam, had been on the ground in Vietnam, I think four days, then left my lovely bride in Southeast Asia, um, no. took a flight uh, back to the US. And so when I was you know, sitting in the makeup trailer, um, I was kind of apologizing to the, the hairstylist, saying, I'm sorry about my hair. I've, it's, you know, I've been traveling, and it's just the way it is. And you know, Matthew's in the chair next to me going, so where'd you come from? <laughs> and so 
you know, I told him I just flew in from Vietnam and and so we just started sharing stories and, and how he says, have you ever been to Machu Picchu? And so I says, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we, we have. And so we just started sharing stories about places that he's been to and I've been to. And it's like, hey, well, have you done this? And have you done this? And that's, that's that was kind so of a nice cool. little bonding moment to have before you go on set, because I obviously had never met him before. Yeah, I mean, he seems just like Tina. They both seem like really like personable, nice, good-hearted people. And that's kind of hard to find in this town. So I'm happy you got to work with both of them. Exactly, yeah. He just seemed like really chill guy on set. <laughs> Very chill. And, you know, I, I th it seemed to me he always stayed in character a bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he would he would pull out just a bit. And what was really nice is when we, we both walked to set together, he introduced me to the director, which I'd already met before, but it was kind of nice for the star of the film to reintroduce me to the director that's again. Cool. and. It, was, it just kind of made for a nice working experience. I'm sure. In did you get to act with him? Yes. In the scenes, exactly. What was that like? Um, it was. Uh, he's it so was talented. Really, he's so amazing. Um, and I think one of the things that I kind of learned from that is every director has a different style, and um, Jean-Marc Vallée works very, very fast, and he's very, very hands-on. So um, that's nice, though, right? Because it know. keeps it moving quicker when you're on set. Yeah. So instead of just having, you know, for the folks out there who um, don't know how things work, they, they put little marks on the ground for where, where you're supposed to stand uh, and then where you're supposed to move to. And as an actor, you just kind of you, you kind of through your peripheral vision kind of see the spot and you go there. Um, and he Jean-Marc Vallée, the director of Dallas Buyers Club, never went through that kind of formal, here's your mark. He didn't he would, choreograph it? He would grab you by the shoulders and says, you start here, and then he would push you along, and then you, you, uh, then you stand here, and then you turn. <laughs> and so it's like, you feel like this little marionette going, okay, so I will start here and then there. And then, you know, he, he worked so fast. There's, uh, you also have like um, assistants who will, who will slate you mm -hmm. know, before, so they know what take it is when they're editing. And uh, so he would move so fast, he would go, okay, good, 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 roll, 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 go act. And then <laughs> so you would see, you would see the, the assistant kind of run in there trying to do the slate and go, oh, forget about it. <laughs> and we, we would just suddenly be talking. Editors. <laughs> we would just we start be talking. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, and then he, Jean-Marc Vallée would actually go in the background and he would start moving stuff in the background. Okay, good, good, good. Yes, okay, go act, roll. So it wasn't super thought out and super prepared. It was w way more like, rush, let's do this, let's it, get it done. It felt, of. Like, um, it felt like we were like on a speed dating type of thing <laughs> for movies. Uh, because we were moving so it's fast. like, hey, we got a budget, let's do this, come I know. on. And then um, we, they actually were on my close-up shot and, and Matthew turned to the director and says, I tell you what, uh, I, I actually felt like I, I had my best take there. And John Mark says, you want to go on your one shot again? Yes. Okay, good. Go. Cool. And he just started moving everything around, moved the, the, the camera around. And before we knew it, we were back on his one shot, which we had already shot. But boom, like five minutes, we were shifted everything around again. And it sounds kind of stressful to do it that fast, but most productions take so long and you're like, oh my gosh, you're on take like 85. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like you got it the first time. So it's kind of nice, I'm sure, to make it rapid, but also confusing. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> and, and, and um, the one thing I've learned is like uh, TV moves very, very fast. They have to shoot so much in a short period of time that they have to move fast. And then film... You know, it takes, you know, years you, sometimes. Sometimes it feels like that. Jean Marc Vallee works almost on a TV schedule. It just, we were just cranking through stuff. It That's was, interesting. Yeah. You mainly do TV stuff, it seems like, right? I mean, you've done a bunch of big movies as well, but recently you've been doing a lot of TV. Um, it's kind of half and half right now. I've, I just completed a couple films, uh, a, a um, Steven Seagal film mm -hmm. uh, and a Tina Fey film. And then, you know, we just got off of Grimm. So I was looking at your IMDb and it's like so many things with the red after it, like post-production or pre-production where it's like going to come out soon. And I'm like, ah, 
it's so I know. exciting. Like I know. everything's coming out every, at once. Every, every, every time I look at that, I go, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Because obviously when you, um, you have stuff that has not come out yet, there's a nice little red little you know, designation saying, you know, in production. You have like four or five or just like lined like up, that. ready yeah. to come out. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome, though. So, yeah, thank you. So are you going to keep commuting out here? Are you kind of commuting all over? Are you thinking of moving out to L.A. for acting? Home sweet home, Colorado? That's a great question. You know, right <laughs> now, uh, Colorado's home. Mm -hmm. um, you live there with your wife? I do, and nice. our, our two little puppies, Merlot and oh. Pino. Wine fans, I hey, know. hey. Ooh. Why didn't we bring a bottle in here? What's wrong with us? Well, Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Should have done it. Should I know. Well, it, now yeah. I know for okay. next time. Okay. If I see you on a red carpet, we'll be like, yeah, what's okay. up? Okay, yeah. Clink. Yeah. I'll be looking for you. <laughs> That's uh, fabulous, though. The nice part about Denver is it's actually kind of centrally located. Mm -hmm. So it's not much more than a two and a half hour flight to most places. That's so not bad at all. That's, that's pretty nice. Um, and then it's, you know, it's a home to a lot of uh, airline hubs, so I can get most places pretty quickly. And, yeah. and weed's legal, so it's not too bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Had to bring it up. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Hey. Um, um, but yeah, no, I, right now, uh, you know, Colorado's home. And so we'll, we'll keep it there and we'll see what happens in the future. See what happens. I mean, it seems like you're very busy and get to fly out all the time and keep working. So that's better I, busy than bored. I know. Right now I'm diamond status on, uh, on United Airlines. So Nice. Uh, I know. <laughs> Collecting those points, get Collecting some flyer miles. Nice. And, you know, get those little upgrades uh, to first class, which is always nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was so great having you in the studio, and I would Thank love you. for our fans to be able to check you out online. Do you have a website or anywhere they can check out your short films? Or Exactly. I'm uh, on my, my personal website is scotttaketta.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-T-A-K-E-D-A.com. I'm obviously on Twitter, at Scott Takeda. Nice. And uh, click Social on that IMDb. Yeah. Yeah, check him out on IMDb. Go yeah. rate him five stars, obviously. And while you're at it, be sure to check us out on iTunes at After Buzz TV. And we love five stars as well. We're all about that, you know. Exactly. Five Making stars it fabulous. Is or whatever the max stars is. If it's 10, it's 10, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is on IMDb. I think it's 10, actually. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. But thank you so much for coming in the thank studio. You. I can't wait to see all your stuff coming out. Appreciate and thank that. you guys for checking us out here at After Buzz TV. And thanks for coming in, Scott, together. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We'll see you guys next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.